Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. This is your host, Ken Lane, here at Waters Garden Center. We've just been doing this show for... No, I don't know how long, over 10 years, probably over 10 to 15 years. So we've just been talking about the, the mountains of Arizona. This is a unique part of the country. We do not garden like anywhere else. So I had a customer come into the garden center this week. He's, he'd garden in, in Northern California and Alaska. And he goes, Ken, this guy's a real gardener. I mean, he thinks soils. He talks Latin names. He's going, I've never had such difficult gardening. What you'll find is... We garden just as easily, but the, the error factor, you could you could have more mistakes in Alaska, more mistakes in Michigan or Northern California or anywhere else, and, and it will work. It'll correct itself. The plants can find a way. Here, because of the dryness, the intensity of the sun, the wind, the altitude, those are all variables that make it, you have to be more exact. You have to be in rhythm, more exact with the, the natural cycles that you'll find going on in the mountains of, of, of Arizona. And I think that's probably true for northern part of, of New Mexico, the southern part of, of, of Colorado. It's kind of the same. This whole area has very alkaline water, dry, dry. I mean, we're going to start drying out in May and June. They're just bone dry, 10% humidity. Yet all these plants have brand new foliage, so they're tender. Then the rains come, and they're overwhelmed with rain in July, August, September. They get a huge rain cycle, and then that drowns some plants. And so you get these seasonal changes. You need plants that can, that can tolerate that. Right now we're planting. We are deep into the planting cycle. Uh, we're full on. Uh, the planting crews are booked out at least three weeks. Uh, every weekend, the, the the garden centers are slammed. You're seeing this across the way. But you need to have plants that can take these bright, warm days that will wake up. And then if we do happen to get a, a last moment frost or, or, or snow, plants can take that. There are a whole series of plants that, that love that. So your flowering kale, your lilacs, forsythias, quince, there's all your purple leaf plums, your shade trees, evergreens. They all love that. And so they, they actually grow better in the spring when it's bright days and it gets real frosty and cold and, and the, some, some weather events that happen. They like that. Your summer plants, we're already starting to get calls from customers. My Virginia creeper hasn't woken up yet. What's going on? My trumpet vine, uh, wisterias, they're, they're starting to show buds pretty good, but, but they haven't leafed out yet. Uh, grapes, desert willows, these are all summer plants. They do. They have no interest in spring whatsoever. They wake up late. They purposely stay in bed when it's cool out. Going, oh, I'm just going to keep these sheets and quilt over me until I'm. Just, I'm not going to go out and I'm not going to leaf out until I know it's truly warm outside. And they know because they like the summer. So those are plants that are probably better being planted when it's warmer out. Things like lilacs. They they celebrate spring. Forsythias, they're in all their glory. Uh, the pink flowering tree right now, that's purple leaf plum. I, it doesn't have any foliage on it, but all the fo all the leaves right now, the, the the petals, it's got pink flowers. After it's done blooming for about, uh, it'll bloom. It's been blooming maybe a couple weeks. It'll bloom for another two four weeks, and then it will start leafing out and start pushing purple leaves. So called purple leaf plum, sometimes called KV plum or thundercloud plum. There's several varieties, but basically the general name is purple leaf plum. It comes out purple, stays purple, stay, falls off purple. It's just a nice, pretty vase-shaped tree, short, maybe uh, 15 to 20 feet tall compared to a 50-foot sycamore or cottonwood or willow. It's considered very short as far as the tree family goes. It's a great plant. It loves the wind. It loves the spring we have. It likes bright sun. It, it, it takes the veracity of everything that, that, that we can throw at it in the mountains of Arizona, and it thrives. So you'll see a lot of mature specimens here. Right after that will be a cousin of that. It'll be the flowering cherries and service berries. 
Uh, as soon as that pink starts starts uh, uh, settling, starts falling, uh, you'll see this white or light pink tree starting to bloom. That's going to be the native flowering cherries, or or there's a flowering peaches, flowering. There's a whole series of flowering. They don't really fruit. Uh, they just set these flowers and have this great miniature short uh, uh, shade tree. They're great plants for here. Service berry blooms white, pure white. It's got a nice green leaf to it. And the birds dearly love to roost inside this tree. And so they use the uh, little, little berries as a food source through summer and fall. It's a great little native tree here. Get it up to size and it, you could look, cut it off of all care and it will just go by itself. The tree that is blooming right now, side by side with that purple leaf plum, that's going to be a Bradford pear. It's an ornamental pear. It's related to fruiting pears, but it blooms so early the frost takes the fruit and doesn't, if it does get a fruit, it's a tiny little thing. So they've bred it, so it's pretty. You get the spring flowers, you get the nice shade. It's kind of a medium size, 30 foot tall tree. And then it's the last tree to turn red in the fall of the year. So it's got a lot of seasonality change. And because the foliage is so uh, waxy, so thick, it tends to be a very drought-hardy, tough, robust plant, uh, tree. And so we plant a lot of these. Now, Bradford pears is what your grandparents always uh, grew. In fact, down in the courthouse around Prescott, a lot of those white trees, those are all Bradford pears, and I helped plant most of those uh, over the decades. Uh, really, they're too big anymore. We should have planted the narrower sized flowering trees. They weren't available back in the day, but now they are. Now they've got a tighter format trees. They've got aristocrat pear, capital pear, this whole ser- sentinel pear. There's these whole series of white blooming pears, and they don't get as white, as chubby, as as, as is wide. They get equally tall, 30 foot, but then now they only get 15 or 20 foot wide instead of 25 feet wide. So they're more upright, better street tree. And so that'd be better in these smaller format yards. There's even better choices now than we had 20 years ago. But the white tree you're blooming all across Northern Arizona, that is going to be your ornamental pear is how you go to the garden center and ask for them. You look up and down the line, you go, oh, they're starting to bloom. Go, I want an ornamental pear. Ken was talking about ornamental pears. And then you'll see them. And then you, what you're really looking by named variety, it's only by the width. It changes the width. So they'll come up with a new species that has that only grows 12 feet wide or 15 feet wide. Instead of the Bradford pear, that's the old-fashioned variety. It grows 25 by 25. Big old round tree, great shade tree, tough it's got all the seasons covered. Even the winter, it has this nice, very light gray bark. It's not as white as aspen, but it's very distinctive, very unusual gray uh, to it. So it's, it's, it's a pretty tree year-round. That's what's going on in, in out in the trees. If you're putting trees in the ground, oh, your timing is just perfect for putting not just, not just flowering trees, but even evergreens. We just got a, a load of Deodor cedars, humongous. I mean, they got to be 10 feet tall by, you can't put your arms around them. Three people couldn't put your arms around them. They're magnificent evergreen trees. Now, Deodor cedars are overdone sometimes. These are 50 foot tall. They're huge. It's the fastest growing of all the evergreen trees. I would say it'd be Deodor cedars and then Arizona cypress and then probably uh, Austrian pines, there's a certain rating as far as, well, mate, no, I'd probably go Deodor cedars, then Austrian pine, and then Arizona cypress as far as growth rate, fastest to the next fastest. They're going to grow at least two feet a year, or maybe if they're happy, even more. And so this is a very fast growing, big swooping branches coming out. So they just big uh, central leader with swooping branches coming down, thick, you can't see through it. So that we you're seeing these kinds of trees come in now because the harvest is on. We're pulling these out of the farm, loading them up, potting them up, and then bringing them into uh, the garden center. Uh, I should explain ball and burlap. That's where they're field grown in the ground at a, at a farm. We dig them up when they're ready to harvest. We wrap the 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 we keep the root intact with burlap, and then we'll plant that burlapped ball into a pot, big pot. 
We will ship it to the garden center mainly to keep it moist, keep it wet, keep it upright. But it's called a ball and burlap tree, or it could be just container grown. It's only, it was grown in that pot from the very beginning. Two types of trees you're going to pick from at the garden center, ball and burlap and container grown. Be right back. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Hi, Waters with this week's Plant of the Week and our flirty skirt pansies. No more shy pansies. These blooms beam back at you. Frilly, cheery, flirty flowers resemble Marilyn Monroe's rippled skirt blowing in a breeze. She enjoys growing in her inclement weather in a carnival of colors priced at just $7.99, so you can enjoy more than just one. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love flirty flowers, they love to shop. Oh no, my pine trees look terrible. Never fear, Plant Protector is here. Plant Protector? From Waters Garden Center? My super strength protector destroys pine scale, bark beetle, and aphids. Just water into the soil and your trees are protected from the inside out for the year. Thank you, Plant Protector. You can always find Plant Protector at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She's been out all week getting her grandmother time in. She visited uh, El Paso. Mm -hmm. So how are the kids doing? They are busy, busy, busy. Yeah, crazy. We have an eight-year-old, one almost five, and one nine months. Nine months, yeah. Crawling, just started kind of crawling, pseudo crawling. So I held down the fort, took care of the, the dogs, our current kids, and then you went off and visited the grandkids in El Paso. Mm-hmm. So our our daughter in law, Teresa, she is holding down the fort. I don't know how she does it. Oh my gosh! I don't know. You army wives and or spouses, not just yeah. wives, it's spouses. I don't know how the spouse holds it down while their their soldier is deployed wherever they are, whether it's whatever armed service. Uh, our son's in a nine month deployment in Korea. And she's holding three kids, getting them to school. She's taking her master's course in uh, nurse practitioner. Nurse oh, I, that woman is is like a little fireball, yeah. always going, moving. It's cra- I was just there helping, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> I don't know how she does yeah. it. Bless her heart. Youth. Youthfulness. Youth. Remember, we used to do that, too. We were young. That is true. <laughs> you have youth on your side. But it was fun. I, I so enjoy spending time with them. We put together... Christopher, our oldest grandson, loves to garden. He does Actually, indeed. He loves to garden. So we put together some herb pots because Teresa likes to use fresh herbs to uh, garden or cook with. So we put herb pots together. Um, we bird proofed the play set because the doves were taking it over. Yeah. So we Pigeon were stew. Busy. <laughs> <laughs> we were busy, 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 but. I'm exhausted. Yeah, well, it's nice yeah. to have you home too. Thank you. I mean, it's, I mean, the, the store runs by itself, but mm-hmm. when you're here, it's just it's so much easier. It's nice but, to uh, be home, so I can yeah. relax now. <laughs> yeah. So, just so you know, Lisa and I, it's this mom and pop organization. We have a lot of employees, dozens of employees, more than that, and and uh, and they do they run it. They really take it and run with it and cover for us. But it's nice to have the whole team together. Oh, you yeah. Work, you're my right-hand person. So you're actually the GM, general manager of the store. And I'm kind of the promotion. This week was taxes, <laughs> retirement accounts. The fun stuff. Care. <laughs> oh, it was not fun. And and holding down you know, the, the house and the garden center. You had to watch Vincent, the oh, dog. Oh, my gosh. He's pretty needy. I'm glad you're home. <laughs> so home. Bef- enough about us. Yes. Do we have any... Questions? questions or we can just keep talking travel like and bore people to death <laughs> oh this is a travel crowd these folks are tuning they like to travel too that's true about? but el paso is not that exciting no, that's not on anyone's <laughs> list yeah unless you're being deployed somewhere oh you're in the army or, or state or border patrol those yeah. two things are huge oh, yeah in that town down there definitely but we do have questions our first one is from larry 
Last year, he had a bumper crop of apples, loved them, yeah. full of worms. He wants oh. to come into the season prepared yeah. this year. So he wants to know timing and what to spray. Sure, easy. So so coddling moth, there's one animal, one animal, oh, moth, <laughs> a little tiny thing, maybe an eighth inch, quarter inch long, and she lays her eggs on the apple. The worm, the larva stage or maggot stage, crawls into the, into the apple, eats the core, and then Burls its way out, flies away, lays more eggs. That's the cycle. You can have up to three, maybe four, at least three different waves of this life cycle of, of coddling moths. So the number one wave is just as the apples are blooming, when they're pollinating, they haven't dropped any petals yet. There's their pollen's going back and forth. Bees are doing their thing. She'll lay her egg right then before the apple encloses, and the fruit will actually enclose around the egg. And so now it is protected. Nothing can get to it. No other insects, no spray, no praying mantis, no ladybugs. Nothing can get to it. It is completely protected. And that's her preferred time to lay eggs. It's all timed. Um, if you could spray an all seasons oil or triple action or anything will kill a colony moth. Uh, we've got several here that are organic here at the garden center. We could show you which one. Spray it just as the petals are starting to drop. Now it's the fruits are pollinated. They're starting to form. If you can spray that, kill that egg as the fruit forms over, now you've got the first wave gone. You, you'll have clean apples. Now, when does she start to lay more eggs? Now we get into she'll come in later, a month and a half from now, lay an egg on the outside of the fruit. The, the egg will hatch, burrow its way in, uh, mature inside the fruit and then burrow its way out. That's when you have multiple exit, mm -hmm. enter and exit tunnels. Now we need a time. When do we want to spray for those eggs? And we just don't know. What your grandparents did, they put it on a calendar and every two weeks they sprayed with harsh chemicals. That's what yeah. they did. And they had clean fruit. Mm -hmm. We're going more organic now and we're smarter than we used to be. Now we have what's called a coddling moth trap. You put this trap up in the tree. It hangs down from a branch, and it's got a pheromone. It's got an attractant in there, and you throw that inside. It's a sticky trap, and when you, you just monitor it. So you go out every day, every morning, whatever, sip your coffee, looking to see any moths in there. Nope, not today. And for two weeks, be nope, not today. And then all of a sudden, you'll be going, oh, look, there is one. And you go, well, one isn't enough. You go in the next day, there'll be like five. You go, whoa, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And then you go, then you'll come in like three days later into like it's full of, of calling moths, these little tiny moths, just full. And the, what the internet says is one calling moth trap will gather all the moths and you won't have to spray anything ever again. Mm. That is a whole bunch of hogwash, you know, hog hooey, whatever you want to call it. That is not <laughs> true. There's so many, there's tens of thousands of them. You need to spray. So you come in and spray the exact same thing. When you see that trap starting to fill up, you spray all of your apples, all of your pears in that orchard, in that yard, in that field. And then that, that will get rid of that wave of eggs being laid on your fruit. It's not the moth that does the, the damage. It's the worm. So we need to kill the worm, kill the egg or the worm. Right. And so there's a moment in time when you can do that. You need to do it after the egg's laid, but before it's hatched. So timing is everything. And you'll do that about two other times through mm -hmm. the growing seasons. You keep those traps up there and monitor it. And so we've got packages here. They're very inexpensive. There's three in a set kind of thing. You just hang them up around the yard. But that's the only way to know when they're active and when to when – to, we went way right. too deep on that subject. But there you go. That's it's apples and pears. Yeah. But, yeah, yep. spraying at the appropriate time can really help keep it you, under control. You can have clean fruits. So. Right. Okay, our next question is from Charlotte. She's getting her raised beds ready for vegetables. Question is, can she put tomatoes in the same spot as last year, or should she move them? And she also wants to know what other amendments would be good to put in That's there. That's a good question, actually. It's time to start putting vegetables in. Uh, so I'd say it's a touch early for, for tomatoes. Wait maybe, wait three, yeah. four weeks, and then, then put those in. Get the garden soil ready for sure. So the amendments are going to be manure or mulch, you need some organics in there. You need a food. So we, we use all-purpose food, 744 all-purpose. I would say also, especially for tomatoes, peppers, potatoes, those kinds of things, really just about anything, also add 
calcium nitrate. Calcium nitrate is a granular. You add it to the soil, but it front loads uh, the soil with a lot of calcium, which is a lack of calcium causes that blackened or blossom end rot. As if you, if you add some calcium into your soils, you'll get rid of all that. And some fruits are very sensitive. I noticed pumpkins, uh, uh, squash really benefit from calcium. Mm -hmm. Brings the flavor out. So those are the three main things that you really add into a garden. Blend it in. Uh, tomatoes, should they be in the same spot? No, they should rotate crops. There are certain things that can build up. Vertinillum wilt is one of those soil-borne diseases that like to eat tomatoes. And it comes back every year on the next crop of tomatoes from the soil. So if you keep planting over and over in the same spot, eventually you're going to have this tomato that just gets yellow, wilts, fall, drops its leaves, and won't fruit. That's vertinillum wilt. You can Google that, take a look at it. But if you rotate your crops, put your tomatoes in a different spot so that soil is never shared the same from year to year, that spore doesn't have any place to, to keep going from, doesn't have a host plant to eat. And so you'll break that cycle. So that that's, yeah, always change up your crops. That's a good good advice for just about any kind of, mm -hmm. of vegetable or flower. So petunias, there's the same thing with petunias. There's a wilt that gets on petunias, comes from the soil. So good questions this week. Thank you, Lisa. Be right back with Kim Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Plants are a lot like puppies. They need care, water, and food. You wouldn't forget to feed your puppies, so don't forget to feed your plants. Waters 7404 All-Purpose Plant Food is a gourmet meal for your plants. The only food for Arizona plants with the nutrients they need for big blooms, a hefty harvest, and tremendous trees, all naturally. It's time to feed your plants with 744 All-Purpose Plant Food from Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Let's talk poop. Hey, I'm Tommy at Waters Garden Center. Ken and Lisa are out right now, so I snuck in to remind you that it's time to add some manure to your garden. It's been a wet winter, and your soil is, well, pooped. Waters Barnyard Manure adds nutrients to get your garden growing. It's organic and odorless, so we really can say our poop don't stink. Buy six bags or more. They're only $5.99. Now that's a load of crap. Tommy, what's going on? Oh, poop, gotta go. Natural, safe, odorless, and organic at Waters Garden Center. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lang. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. I started out the show with what trees are blooming. What, what are you seeing wake up first? What's announcing spring? And I mentioned purpley plum and Bradford pears. It just keeps going from there. The crab apples are the most stunning of all of them. They're the brightest of all the flowering trees, and they'll be another two to three weeks out. They'll start to bloom. So it's spring pulsates with waves of color. And that's the way it should be. So not everything wakes up at once. It's always transition. You should always have something interesting going on in your yard. When you're planting a tree, uh, make sure you stake those things. We're, we're, we're going to come into this prevailing southwest wind that's unique to this to the mountains of the southwest comes up and just it blows nonstop from morning through evening it just always blows and as these trees leaf out they're like a huge parachute and they won't blow over but they'll start to lean and as that as that as that wind pulsates and just forces that plant to lean over and you'll see in your neighborhood while you're walking around look at which way they're pointing they're always pointing to the northeast that's because that particular tree was not staked when it was young. So you need to stake it. Usually, we, if we're coming out, if our planting crew is going to come out to you, we'll put two stakes, one on either side of the root ball, and we'll tie just once in between the stakes to the trunk. If it's a really tall tree, we might tie it twice. We want it to bend. We want it to flex its muscles. We want it to get stronger, to move up and down in the wind. We just don't want it to lean over. And so we, we always take that 
transportation stake. There's a shipping stake that's that when you bring the tree from the farm to the garden center, we'll put a, a stake right on the trunk. And that's so we don't scratch the bark. We keep the, we don't damage or break the trunk while we're manhandling this thing to get it to the garden center. At our at Waters, we pull all those off because we know you should not have that on there. And you can't truly get a feel for what the tree looks like if it's got a, a, a stake right next to the trunk. So that should come off. And then it should go on either side of the root ball so this plant can free move as the wind blows, but it won't ever lean and solidify in this stuck in this northeast exposure type of plant. This is critical for evergreens that load up with snow. They'll just fall right. You'll get a heavy snow in late spring, early, early fall, and all of a sudden it'll just fall over, just lay on the ground. You want that thing to grow straight to the moon, just straight up and down. Critical for fruit trees. Fruit trees need to be straight. When that thing loads up with 400 pounds of apples or pears or cherries or peaches or apricots, whatever it is, pumps, you want it to be, you want that weight to be distributed perfectly over all the scaffolding or the branch structure of that plant. It's got, it's critical to grow straight. Otherwise, it'll load up one year and just fall right over. And it won't happen the first couple of years. It'll happen down the road. Once that trunk is up a little larger, it's maybe six inches in caliber. It's got a full head. It looks mature. Now it's really got a crown on it, a large mass up top. And and it loads up with even more fruit than ever. You're going, oh, is this ever going to be a good canning year? Oh my gosh, this is going to be great. Oh, the fresh fruit's going to be so delicious. And then boom, it falls right over. The roots will literally leap out of the ground. Uh, and so it's just this tree laying on the ground with, with no roots. And there's no way to recover after that. It's only because five years earlier, it wasn't staked properly when it was young. It only Those stakes, if you get a mature tree, and it's, it's, it's like, like our fruit trees. All of our trees here, here at Waters Garden Center, our niche is we have fruit trees that are of fruiting age. We don't have whips or, or younger things. Fruit trees have to be four to seven years old, five, seven years old before they're old enough to fruit. So all of our trees have been at the farm a minimum of five, sometimes 10, 15 years for the big ones. And so they're, they're old enough to start fruiting. And so those trees need to be staked and held up upright. And then if they're, if the trunk is big enough, those are pretty mature. One year's worth of roots, it'll just go by itself. You can take those stakes right off the following season. Usually what I'll tell folks is uh, keep the stakes in the ground and cut the ties. Let it go through a windstorm and see how it does. And if it stays upright by itself, then break those stakes off. Because if, it, if it's not quite ready and you break those stakes off early and you go, oh, it needs to be staked. One more season, it's a pain to put. It's It's a pain. That's one of the reasons you want to have a planting crew come out to your plant the tree for you. It's it's heavy. It's a huge hole, and they've got the stake drivers and the jackhammers on the truck. You don't have to do that yourself. It's worth the money, so to get it done right. But that's the stakes are a pain to get in the ground. That's planting. Talking about planting crews. If if you know someone here, insider tip. We are hiring for our planting install folks. This is a great job. These folks, our employees are noted as a place where they put their roots down. Once you come to work for, for Waters, family owned, we are a huge family. They don't go anywhere. We pay well. We treat you with respect and we let you on the inside track. We let you know how the company is doing. That's how we got through the last recession. I just said, hey, folks, here's where we're at. Here's where we're going. We're doing okay. I know your friends just got laid off, but look, we're doing fine. And you let the whole staff know. If they're family, they should know how the company is doing. They should know what we're spending on inventory and advertising and how much how many staff members we have. And so if you know of anyone that, that likes that kind of environment, have them apply. We would love to have another one or two folks here at the Garden Center uh, this spring. Be right back with Lisa Watersline and her garden tips after this. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Plants are a lot like puppies. They need care, water, and food. You wouldn't forget to feed your puppies, so don't forget to feed your plants. 
Water 7404 All-Purpose Plant Food is a gourmet meal for your plants. The only food for Arizona plants with the nutrients they need for big blooms, a hefty harvest, and tremendous trees, all naturally. It's time to feed your plants with 744 All-Purpose Plant Food from Waters Garden Center in Prescott. In a new place, it's difficult to know who to trust, how to get help at the house, and which nursery will simply do what they say they'll do. At Waters Garden Center, we're here to help, in the landscape at least. Our team of plant ambassadors know your neighborhood, the plants that add color, increase privacy, and add fragrance and beauty. And we can show you exactly how to plant locally, or we have teams to do all the work for you. We are Ken and Lisa Lane, and we guarantee our plants will live up to every promise here at Waters Garden Center. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. Back in the hot seat is Lisa Waters Lane. Comes with just garden inspiration. So the gardens, I see you've been uh, busy outside with our Yes. Our gardens, so you can tell that it's spring. You brought home, I don't know how many flats of flowers, mainly you don't want right to now. Know. Sorry, I know. my secret. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's okay. I love it. Yeah. It's worth every. We're, we're gardeners. We always have fresh flowers, a, a pot mm-hmm. of some sort inside, something in bloom. Yep. And when it's out of bloom, like I just threw away the one orchid and bought another one, a bromeliad. <laughs> so just there's always something uh-huh. uh, colorful inside and year round, and then outside. Most of the year, yeah. they're always pretty spectacular. People walk by and go, any month of the year, wow, that yard's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they own a garden center. <laughs> yep. We keep it pretty because we like it pretty. I love to drive into my driveway and it's just this wave of color hits me. And it's just beautiful. And it lists, no matter how rough the day, how busy, how tired, it's Therapeutic, just uplifting. Yeah. And yeah. especially as the evenings get warmer, I love to go out when I get home from work and in our front and just kind of relax and yeah. enjoy the flowers. It's sip, nice. a, sip a glass of wine or yeah. tea and watch the hummingbirds go back and right. forth and flowers going. Yeah. It's kind of fun in the morning. The little oh, birds yeah. are in between the pavers harvesting right. the sand, right. all kinds of weird stuff. So yeah. we had uh, quail. Uh, uh, roosting our pots yeah. last year. Hopefully that'll happen again this year. Yeah, we actually yeah. saw them hatch, right. jump out of the containers. Out. That was crazy. It's, that was, uh, <laughs> that's just part of gardening. It's part of the joy of being right. nature. We are surrounded by nature mm-hmm. and you can attract nature right. to you mm-hmm. in your, in your uh, living space. Right, right. So what do you got for us this week? Well, this weekend I'm, I'm teaching the container gardening class, yeah. which is always, a lot of people love that class. Uh, but I thought we would cover, because there's some generalities that we can cover for all container gardening. Uh, so I thought we would chit-chat about that a It'd little bit. It would be easier to do this with a video chatting thing so you can see it, <laughs> not just hear it, but well, let's see true. how we can verbally describe how there to put together a container garden. That'd be good. That'll be tricky. Yeah, use your imagination. Yeah. But first thing I always tell people is pick your container and pick a good container. And you want your container to have good drainage because there's nothing worse for a container garden plant whatever than to have poor drainage because it yes things like moisture but if they're constantly wet you are going to root the rots root rot the roots you tell i'm tired you're going to rot those roots off of there and there's a reason that at a lake you Mm -hmm. don't see plants growing in the water (laughs) yeah okay we're not louisiana there's a couple trees that might grow but you know you go out to goldwater or lynx Mm -hmm. or or Mormon Lake or wherever, right. there you don't see trees and shrubs growing in the water. Very, very few. Uh, water kind of drowns yeah. uh, the foliage out. And so Definitely. a pot without a hole in the bottom is going to do the good. same exact thing. Right. So make sure you've got some good drainage on there. Um, the other thing is your soil. I don't know how many times, and I've seen this, people are digging up the soil yeah. in their yard and putting it in their containers. You don't want to do that. These little plants, they're coming from these beautiful little greenhouses and they're babied. And if you throw it right into our soil, they're not going to be happy. They're just going to kick up their little toes and go downhill. Our soils are too heavy. Our, I know that Egyptians built pyramids by putting them into molds, <laughs> clay in the molds, then baking them, and then making block, and then right. building these 
if you just put our native earth inside of a pot, you're making a huge brick right. in there. Right. Plants are not going to grow. The reason you're you're using containers and raised beds is so you can get out of mm-hmm. our native soil. Now, use the same soil that, that the plants are grown in called water's potting soil. We right. make a soil. Mm-hmm. We sell the soil that our plants are grown in. Use that, mm-hmm. and the plants will just take automatically going, oh, right. more room. That's right. best advice you can give. Definitely. And just because a potting soil is cheap does not mean no. it's oh, good. No. Yeah. So yeah. there is different qualities of potting soil. Um, ours here is an excellent potting soil because it holds moisture, but it also drains well. And quite affordable. <laughs> yeah. I would say cheap though. But Not definitely, cheap. Definitely value. But just because you can find, you know, a three cubic foot bag for three dollars does not yeah, mean no. it's a good potting soil. <laughs> Um, some of the an amendment you can put in there, not an amendment, but some, put some Aqua Boost crystals into oh, your good, container good, gardening. Yeah. Um, those kind of when they get moisture to them, they swell up, uh, and then they're like little miniature self waters because they just release little amounts of water throughout time. So it, it evens out your watering. You have a little more forgiveness in that watering. So I definitely add those. Now I forgot. My pots that I put together, I forgot. And I put these brand new pots together. And then I left for five days. Well, when I came home, you didn't realize that some of them. <laughs> no, I didn't water anything. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. So I had some dead plants. And that was my own fault. You should have put I Aqua Boost in there. I should have put Aqua fine. Boost. It would have made a huge oh, I'm difference. I'm sorry, babe. Or... I was trying to keep the dog alive. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. <laughs> and the business. That. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it's things like that you don't think about, but they're hugely important and, oh. and immensely help you be immensely more successful when you're gardening. The other thing I would say when you're picking out your plants, pick things that like each other. So if you have a really hot, sunny spot, pick out plants that all like the hot sun. If you have a dark, shady spot, pick out plants that like the shade. Um, if you don't want to muss and fuss with them, go with succulents and things that are drought hardy, but don't go mix a pansy in with your succulents because yeah. they don't like it. They have different needs and different likes. So when you're putting those gardens together, make sure they're all going to like each other and get along and have this, want the same environment. Can you just go Darwin effect? Just kind of. <laughs> Chuck a bunch of stuff and see what survives, and of course you that's, can. Oh, that's an expensive way to do it. But <laughs> if you want just, to, that's why we have plant ex plant ambassadors here at the garden, roaming around, right. helping you put things together. And the other thing I would say is, is you know, a lot of people think, well, what can I put in a container? And I always say, what can't you put in yeah, a container? True. You can grow almost anything in a container as long as it's the appropriate size container. That's very important. But yes, you can grow a shrub. Uh, with some pretty pansies and alyssum around it, that's perfectly fine. You can throw a perennial in the middle of something. A perennial comes back every year, but maybe you want some more color than what that perennial is going to consistently give you. Well, put some pansies and some alyssum and some snapdragons and some other color around it to kind of help show each other. They'll show each other off that way. I just had a customer... I was helping them yesterday with a, a topiary. Mm-hmm. Actually, we got all of our top- topiaries are, they look like bonsai plants, only they're large. They're landscape right. plants that have been spiraled, mm-hmm. pom-pommed. This was a weeping atlas cedar, serpentine form. So it's so a cedar. It's like our, our down in the courthouse here in Prescott. The statehood tree is a atlas cedar. Mm-hmm. Well, this is a cousin of that, and it actually trails as this long tendril that you very train pretty. to go anywhere. Very neat, very unusual. It's an art piece. They had a big pot. They put this in the middle and put pansies all around oh, it. Nice. And it just it just went together. Yeah. Another couple had a weeping cherry. They had a weeping th- tree. Mm-hmm. They put it in a big pot and they put some some uh, kales and calendula, I think, together around right. the base. Mm-hmm. It just looks great together. So you yeah, can do does. that. But they had big pots. They were probably mm-hmm. twenty four inches across. Right. Uh, they were planting in, so they'd be set for years to come. Mm-hmm. They'll just transition transition the flowers every once in a while. But the the right. anchor tree was the atlas cedar mm-hmm. or the weeping cherry. We've done that in front of our house. We yeah. have the huge pots, and we put nandina in it, and we transition the flowers 
out year round. Yeah. One of our Naninas bit the dust I this know, winter. I know. Both of them, I replaced both. <laughs> They're just looking bad. It's just, they're bringing us down. Yeah. So we'll put new plants in there, but we'll change our color out. Right now we have pansies yeah. and lissom, but we'll change that out to petunias and that type of thing a little bit later. The color looks so good. I hate to pull the Nantine out because I'll I know. kill some of the flowers, but eventually we have neighbors to impress though. So <laughs> I feel no the pressure. pressure. <laughs> um, the other thing I want to hit on is... Uh, Fertilization. So when you've got these pretty little flowers that just, especially annuals, they want to bloom, bloom, bloom all season long for you. Well, you need to give them some food to help them do that. And the flower power, a nice water soluble food is great for that. Yeah. Flower power is a one that we make ourselves. Mm -hmm. One scoop and a gallon of water that will that just kind of front loads it with phosphorus or, or that middle number generates more flowers. And so if you do that, you will have a hanging basket that's over the top, a rose that's huge flowers, uh, petunias that trail forever. So flower powers are great stuff. Come talk to Lisa, or we've got several designers out there that just do container gardens uh, for commercial settings or, or large residentials. Uh, they're available. So thank you, Lisa. Be right back with more on The Mountain Gardeners. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Hi, Waters with this week's Plant of the Week and our flirty skirt pansies. No more shy pansies. These blooms beam back at you. Frilly, cheery, flirty flowers resemble Marilyn Monroe's rippled skirt blowing in a breeze. She enjoys growing in her inclement weather and a carnival of colors priced at just $7.99, so you can enjoy more than just one. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love flirty flowers, they love to shop. Wondering why my garden looks amazing? Well, that's personal. The personal garden shopper service at Waters Garden Center, that is. Before talking with my personal shopper, I had no idea which plants would be best for me. But now my garden is bursting with flowers and buzzing with hummingbirds. Just go to watersgardencenter.com, click on Shop, and choose Personal Garden Shopper. A Waters Garden expert will pick the perfect plants for you, personally. The Personal Garden Shopper, only at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. So I went out, visited all the garden centers this week, at least in the central highlands area, from Prescott Valley, Chino, Prescott, just kind of doing my thing, making sure where we're at, where we're, I'm, I'm competing with all these big boxes and other garden centers and uh, just it's making rounds. I'm saying hi. I'm friends with, we're basically friends with a lot of them. I love meeting the uh, Depot, Lowe's, Walmart's managers because they're not selling everything. They don't have the expertise. They have no interest in having everything. So if if I make friends with them, I shake hands, say, hey, I'm Ken Waters. Uh, they'll they'll kind of go, hey, I don't have it here, but go over to Waters. And they send people to me of all things. So they can be this great alliance. Anyway, I'm making the rounds. And I am noticing, and, and you need to be aware of what's happening with the inventory offering, the plant offerings. Uh, right out front of your grocery stores, right out front of your hardware stores, right out front of your drug store, everywhere, they've got vegetables. Uh, they've got flowers. They've got, and, it, and, and, and most of us at the higher elevations, most of us should not be planting those flowers yet. Let me just explain why. I know they got them. I know they're available, but we're not done with the cold weather yet. So you got to be you got to be either ready to protect and cover plants, knowing that it, the weather could change on us because it won't stay nice like this. We'll have that one last storm. Trust me, it's going to happen, and it will take out your basil, your tomatoes, your zucchinis, your marigolds, your the, the summer plants. There's some things that like the bright and the hot sun. They like summer. They have no interest. In spring, yet they're the ones that grow the fastest. So these crops come online so fast. So the growers get more turns per square foot. I'm going way too deep on this. So on a wholesale level, they like to push the summer plants because they make more money. And so they force them into the system. And then you buy them, you plant them in your garden. You're going, dang it, it died. Why did it die? Because it got real cold that evening. Uh, so it just it was not a spring loving plant. It was a summer loving plant. 
So things you can plant now, all your leafy crops, your lettuce, spinach, cauliflower, beets, kale, uh, cabbages, uh, all, all of those Brussels sprouts. I've got uh, artichokes came in, r- rhubarb, potatoes. We've got seed potatoes, all organic, onion plants, not just not just the bulb, the sets. Sets are not the way to plant onions. You want to use a plant. The plants are what give you the big keeper onions. That's one that if you want to harvest the actual onion part, not just the green tops, the actual onion, you, you plant onion plants. We've got three different types of sweet onion plants in. All of those go in the ground now. But what you're seeing at a lot of these big box wholesale everywhere are the summer plants. Be really careful. Now, the locals, what we talk about is Mother's Day as a demarcation line is the, is the, is the holiday we use to start planting summer plants. Before that, before Mother's Day, we only plant spring plants. So Mother's Day is generally our 100-year average last frost. It's 100 years of data, and on average, the last frost is Mother's Day. Us, most of us, okay, it's a little bit earlier than that for you folks out in Spring Valley, Mayor Cortis Junction, you know, Camp Verde, Cottonwood, Sedona. Uh, maybe it's a little later than that for you folks in Williams, Flagstaff, those areas. So, but, but in general, if you go Mother's Day plus or minus a couple of weeks, that's us. Well, this is the end of March. That's not so good for a tomato plant unless if you plant your tomato plant or your eggplant or your squash, a, a summer plant, if you put it into a plant protector, there's this, or a wall of water, there's this mechanism that you fill up little rings of water around this plant and it collapses, makes a little teepee around your plant and it retain, keeps all the cold out, warms the soil up and radiates uh, the warmth of the sun. It just heats up this water, and protects this plant. You can now cheat and, and have your plants in a good month early. I've actually had my tomatoes growing in those plant protectors and they're popping up through the top and it snowed on my plant. I planted them in March, went through April, last snowed at the end of April and they kept going. They, they were not killed because that protector kept it from, kept it warm. So unless you're going to do that though, you're going to be tempted. I'm telling you, this nice weather is going to continue. And then all of a sudden it's just going to be one foul swoop, one, one storm event. It's going to come in and take some of those. Just be aware, especially for things like basil, cilantro, uh, tomatoes. They're, these things don't even like to be below 50 degrees. I mean, they love summer. They need to have summer. Go for those. So just, just, I just wanted to put that out there and be aware of what to look for. You know, one other little tip, just sometimes I don't intend to go down these rants or down these paths, but just top of mind. One other thing too, while you're buying plants, so we're in the planting season, it's good to go. You can plant, just make sure you plant spring things. You're good to go. When you're buying a plant, you're not actually buying a plant. You're really buying a root. And the bigger the root you have, this is unique for here. Okay, so, so bear with me, you folks from the southern states. You don't, you, you're not going to believe okay, the humid areas. You know, old timers, where you just you, your grandparents always planted bare root and bears better, smaller's better. In a dry climate where it's just ten percent humidity, prevailing southwest wind, alkaline water, just at these this area of northern Arizona, really the bigger the root ball you have. The, the easier it is to garden. And the reason being, you've got more fudge factor, more mistake factor. And so the more roots you have, the more, now you can miss a watering for a day and there's enough root mass to keep it going. If you buy that little tiny six pack, you know, we, we sell six pack plants. What that is, it's got six cells, six plants inside this planter's mix uh, bucket. So there's six little plants in there. There's like five different sizes of six packs. So you can't just go shop six packs to six packs because there's all different sizes. And then there's pony packs. Won't even go there. It's tiny, tiny packs. The the tiny six packs, some of them are, are basically a plug, a little tiny, maybe one inch by one inch by one inch. And if you plant that in the ground, if you even look at it wrong for, for the first month and a half, it's going to die. If you overwater it, 
it's going to die. If you're underwater, it's going to die. If it gets too windy, it's going to die. If it snows, it's going to die. It's going to die because the roots just aren't big enough, to, hardy enough to keep that top growth growing. The six-pack that we grow in, we purposely have, are growing in the largest size six-pack. The physical root size is bigger. It's still economical. It's going to be more expensive than the box store down the road. But the reason we grow in that size plant is because the roots are larger. And so our, our gardeners will have more success when they put them in the ground. They'll, they'll take off faster. You'll notice that with your four-inch size, your gallons, every, everything. The bigger the roots you can find, the more success you're going to have in your gardens. So for my gardens, I like to plant one gallon size plants. So it's a little bit bigger hole. I'm doing mainly container gardens and raised beds because I've 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 had a couple back surgeries where I just can't get on the ground like I used to, but I still love gardening. So I, I want to sit down at the edge of the raised bed and garden. So I, I, I the soil's pretty good, uh, but I, I like one gallons because now I've got a substantial root structure, and the plant is large. You can get a big dahlia a large pansy, a very large kale, and it's going to grow and keep going. Whereas a smaller six, six inch, I'm probably six weeks ahead growth wise by planting a gallon over a six pack, maybe two, three weeks ahead over four inch for a gallon. So I'm planting, I'm looking for roots. I'm looking for error factors so I can make a mistake. And sometimes you all are just being sold the wrong thing at the wrong time. Trust me. You don't want to be planting certain things, your summer plants, unless you're going to protect them, you have a greenhouse, or you're going to roll them in the garage every night and then bring them back every day. You're going to work at it. And you gardeners, you know who you are. You you, you like doing that. You, you're trying to, you want bragging rights. You can go to that summer party in May going, I just picked my first tomato and it was so good. It just melted my mouth. How are your tomatoes doing? And you're going, you know they didn't plant theirs until Mother's Day, but you planted yours the 1st of April, and you're a month ahead. And so you you can do that. Roll them in, roll them out. But most of us, most of the gardens are going to wait till the end of this, end of April, first part of May, before you really commit all in with your gardens. Be right back with more garden tips, tricks, and advice. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Growing up in Prescott, we knew spring was here when my grandmother's lilacs bloomed. I'm Lisa Waters Lane, and my grandmother would be thrilled with the new Bloomerang Purple Lilacs at Waters Garden Center. They don't just bloom once in spring, they bloom again in summer. Mine bloomed three times last year, making spring last well into fall, and just $29.99. Come check out all the heavenly new sights and scents that are making this spring the most beautiful ever. Lilacs like Grandma used to grow and better. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. I remember as though it was yesterday. Should we be open Sundays or not? The revolution came after a church social. After the fellowship, a friend was heading to the box store to get some plants because Waters wasn't open. Sunday was his only day to garden that week, just like it was yesterday. Waters Garden Center. It's open on Sunday from 9 to 5 with plant experts ready to advise on any subject. My name is Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road here in Prescott. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. I do owe an apology to at least several folks. I wrote a garden column last week about peonies. And so peonies are a great perennial, grows here at the higher elevations. It needs four seasons. It needs cold winters and then a definite four season climate. So that's perfect for the mountains. I had a bunch of them. They weren't even coming up. The eyes had just started to, to protrude through the soil that, oh, I had 20 of them. That's enough. I'll write about peonies. Well, it was a hot topic. Everyone wanted a peony. They were gone before the weekend was done. So I apologize. What you're finding is the, we, we you'll get more. The garden centers will have more. And so we're just we're still loading up. We have trucks probably every other day right now. We're still filling up the garden centers, and the crops will actually get larger on most things, especially peonies 
perennials, you know, that kind of thing. So, in fact, the larger peonies, the Ito peonies, the, the, the really exotics will come in. We'll sell these. It's a hybrid between a tree peony and a English peony. We graft those together. We get this ginormous shrub with flowers that are the size of your hand that are super fragrant and very unusual colors. Those don't even come in until middle of April. And so it's coming. So, But I apologize. I wrote about it and I ran out and I felt bad. I mean, I just thought, dang it, I'm telling people about stuff that they can do now and then you can't get them. So... And then secondly, a huge shout out to you folks out at Presco Lakes. This is out on Monday of this week, talking to their huh, club members at the golf course. And uh, there were probably just shy of 100 people. There was a big crowd. And my allergies are going nuts. I could barely talk. And I'm going over which plants. There I focus on plants for them because they've got heavy javelina and deer pressure. And rabbit They're right there on the course. Uh, so I went, here, here are her plants that are pretty, uh, that grow in the full sun, that take our, that mountain, rugged mountain uh, of views, and the animals don't eat. And so we focused on that. So you all were delightful. Thank you very much. Uh, very fun, energetic, great questions. Oh, my gosh. They were into it. Thank you for that. Throughout the week, Lisa and I camp out here at Waters Garden Center. We are actually available. We We run around. You'll see us often. At the garden center. Now, we might be incognito with a hat pulled down over our eyes, an apron on, and running the fork left, or we might be in the tree racks or unloading flower trucks. We're mom and pop. We're, we're here with the staff. And our staff, actually, they know more than we do because they're buying. I actually give that responsibility for herbs and vegetables to a manager, and they run that. I tell them the, the numbers to get and like which way to skew it. We look at it together, but they order it. They know what's coming, what's at the farm. Got someone for flowers, someone for perennials, someone for trees, someone for shrubs, hard goods, all the fertilizers and stuff. So they actually know more than we do. I mean, almost, but they make us look good. We get all the credit, but we shouldn't get all the credit. Our team, we put together a great team that that just loves working together, that 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 runs it for us. That being said, if you know of someone that wants to join a team like that, that wants to be a part of something bigger than themselves, we've got openings in spring. This is the time. You want to get a job at a garden center, be outdoors, work with plants, deal with delightful customers. Just, they're in the mode. They're, this is a therapy session for them. They're, they're relaxed when they're gardening. This is not like selling lumber or screws or nuts or bolts or drugs or drugs where'd that come from it's a garden center uh this is a great place we've got openings have them come apply we'd love to see them give them an app or whatever it's available online watersgardencenter.com it's easy to find us if you want but uh throughout the week come say visit say hi we love talking to friends here at the garden center i remember as though it was yesterday should we be open sundays or not the revolution came after church social after the fellowship, a friend was heading to the box store to get some plants because Waters wasn't open. Sunday was his only day to garden that week, just like it was yesterday. Waters Garden Center. It's open on Sunday from 9 to 5 with plant experts ready to advise on any subject. My name is Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road here in Prescott. Oh no, my pine trees look terrible. Never fear, Plant Protector is here. Plant Protector? From Waters Garden Center? My Super Strength Protector destroys pine scale, bark beetle, and aphids. Just water into the soil and your trees are protected from the inside out for the year. Thank you, Plant Protector. You can always find Plant Protector at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Hi, Waters with this week's Plant of the Week and our Flirty Skirt Pansies. No more shy pansies. These blooms beam back at you. Frilly, cheery, flirty flowers resemble Marilyn Monroe's rippled skirt blowing in a breeze. She enjoys growing in her inclement weather and a carnival of colors priced at just $7.99. So you can enjoy more than just one. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love flirty flowers, they love to shop. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. 
Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.